Are your kitchen and bathroom way overdue for a remodel? Well, I got the guy for you. Call John Sellers at First Response Contracting, 484-256-7136. Both residential and commercial services, and he's licensed and insured. Call him at 484-256-7136, First Response Contracting. Hello, this is Brad Wiseman, and you're listening to Real Estate and You. Or each time we're on here, we try to bring up some topics that are interesting in real estate, things that are going on and all kinds of other stuff. And sometimes we go off on tangents on other things too, but that's kind of the part of the show that's fun. So with me today, I have a really cool guest. Uh, I've known her for many, many years. Her name is Michelle McCartney, and she is a real estate extraordinaire. Let's call, let's call it that, real estate extraordinaire. And uh, Michelle, hello. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. You're very, very welcome. I'm glad that you're here. And um, one of the things I brought you here for, now you have been in the business for how many years? 32. 32 years. You're probably one of the only ones in the office that's here longer than, that's in the business longer than me. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, but I brought you on today. You have so much knowledge in the business, but there's there's one of the things that stands out for me is I know you do a lot of investment properties. Uh, you do flips, I think is what we call them, right? Flips. Yes, I do flips. And you're really good at it. I mean, I've seen pictures and things like that. Tell me how you got into doing that. Well, what's interesting is I actually did my first flip before I became a realtor. Now, see, that's something I didn't know. Well, that's interesting. So your first flip was 33 years ago. It was. Oh, my gosh. And that's what got you into real estate? Yes. Interesting. See, now that's something I didn't know. So so you do a flip, okay, and then you realize, oh, wow, this is fun. I want to get into real estate? Well, no. I Actually, the real estate agent that helped me with it, I, I basically said I'd like to buy the cheapest house in Wilson School District, oh. and he identified that for me, and this was back in 1987. Wow. And I purchased that house. It was a little single in Sinking Spring. And my parents and I went in and did a very simple, you know, redo, renovation. And uh, I sold it right away. Awesome. And so then when I was talking to him later on, he said, you know, you really should be a realtor because you see what's not there. Interesting. You see what's not there. And that is definitely an art. Yeah. So I guess a better way of saying it is that I, I look at something and I see it's possibility. It's possibility. Which also comes in handy when you're selling real estate. Absolutely. It comes in handy with a lot of things. I mean, you know, we don't always know or see what's right in front of us, but sometimes we can see the possibility of what it could be. And that's what you're talking about, which is really cool. So you buy your first property, you flip it and, and obviously it goes well. So you made money on it, right? Yeah, I think it was sixty five hundred dollars back in nineteen eighty seven. That's a lot of money in eighty seven. <laughs> I, I think that's a lot of money. So you do that, and then you decide you want to get into the business. So you've been doing real estate now. Just so you, you people know, Michelle has been in the business thirty two years. She has been also successful for thirty two years. Um, I met you probably what twenty years ago, twenty five years ago, 25. somewhere in that room. It would have to be. Brad, it's more than 25 years yeah, ago it is, you sang isn't it? at my wedding. That's true. I did sing and at I your wedding. And I have a 23-year-old son. <laughs> this is true. So it's definitely more than 25 years ago. So yeah, the math, I was never good at math. So uh, so when we get back into the investment properties, let's talk about this some more. So you did a flip. Did you ever think that that was something you're going to keep doing? I don't even know how that happened because I did ultimately, I've probably done about 50 flips over wow. the years and it became something I truly enjoyed. And there's been different years in the market where there were an abundance of properties that mm -hmm. were entering the market that were considered fixer uppers. A lot of times it was because there were bank foreclosures or there's estates and things like that. And as they became available or as I would show property to a young couple and it would be too much work for them, yeah, I would see the possibility in it and mm -hmm. thought it would be a great investment. Interesting. And uh, that's how it happened. So it's kind of cool. So you get into a house and, and, and I totally get what you're saying is that there's a lot of times we show houses to first time buyers and they look at it and just go, there's no way. And it, it could be just that they don't have the money. It might not be that they don't have the imagination, just not the the, the uh, funds to do it. Um, but that makes sense. So that's kind of cool that you, you see it that way. So what, what do you look for? Are you looking for something in particular, like a certain price range, a certain type of house, certain location? Okay. So... I oftentimes would look at properties that maybe I could buy between sixty and eighty-five thousand dollars and sell between one hundred and twenty-five and one hundred and seventy-five thousand. Okay. I found that that 
product turned over very quickly. The house wasn't too large. So my exposure to what could possibly go wrong was minimized because the expense I was going to go to to make the improvements wasn't so great that mm-hmm. if something went wrong, the project would go wrong. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause, cause you're working on, I mean, it's not huge margins there. Either, no, it's right? not. And as it, as the market got tighter through the years, sometimes the margin wasn't that great, but right. um, I had some guys that enjoyed doing the work and I tried to keep them busy. So I felt like it was all still fun to do. Yeah. And um, my time in the project itself is mostly front loaded with the design and then picking out finishes and product, like I'd load my car with all the fixtures for lighting and plumbing and stuff. But on a day-to-day basis, I didn't have to be there. Okay. So regardless of how much I actually made, it was always a good return on my time invested. Gotcha. You know, it's funny. I have to tell you a little story. I did one flip in my whole life <laughs> and I failed miserably, just so you know. So I'm not as good as you. Um, I did one flip a long time ago and I made the mistake of thinking I could do all the work myself. Well, what ended up happening is instead of it taking six weeks, it took probably four months. And then by that time, you're, you're chewing up in your interest payments and things like that, your profits. So I'm not so good at it. So I will not be doing a podcast about me doing investment properties. Um, but moving on. So do you knowing up front, when you go into an investment property, do you ever go, okay, this one's going to be one that I just want to rent, or this is going to be one I'm going to flip? Yes. So there are certain markets inside of our county that are really strong rental properties and also a um, a location that I feel would be worth holding because of the appreciation I would experience. Mm-hmm. So there's different locations. There's A, B, and C locations. And if I thought I could secure a home, make the renovations, and then at least cover My principal interest taxes and insurance when I actually termed it out, Mm -hmm. which means I refinanced it into a permanent financing situation with a, a, um, like usually a commercial lender. And I liked the location and felt that I would get the appreciation over Mm -hmm. time. Then I put it into my rental program. And as you know, I have like 18 to 20 rentals. That's awesome. That's awesome. So it is a different, it's a different thing. It's you look at, you analyze and go, okay, great area, great appreciation. If I hold on to this, put it into my portfolio of rentals, this is something that I can get out if I need to, because of the the word is, and I can, I can also rent it. And you're not looking to make a fortune on the monthly um, payment versus your, your rent. I mean, it's covering the payment, right? Yeah. So here's, here's really a couple of things to think about that I think people don't think about. Once I go in and renovate, when I put that property into a rental, I don't get phone calls because people ask me all the time, how do you manage all of this yourself and Mm -hmm. sell real estate and do a flip and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, because it's renovated, I don't get phone calls. It's, I get great tenants because the properties are beautiful. Right. And what People forget, I think, oftentimes is so if I'm only clearing $100 a month on my property, but I don't get a single phone call for three years other than, I don't know, maybe a a clogged, you know, drain or or something. something. Yes. Mm -hmm. Every month, a principal balance is being reduced. Mm -hmm. And over time, it is absolutely amazing. So if you considered, even if you had, let's just say 10 properties and each property was rented and the principal reduction in each loan was $300 a month. Mm-hmm. Okay, so 300 times 10 properties is $3,000 a month times 12 is $36,000 a year that I am making yeah. without doing anything. It's gone into a savings account, basically. Yes, yeah. without doing mm-hmm. anything. So there's there's these hidden things in the conversation if you're willing to stay in it and you do have to pay attention to the properties. It's really helpful to have a really great electrician mm-hmm. on call, um, a plumber on call, people that you can count on. But if you renovate before you put them in the program, honestly, like I can turn sometimes a property in about five hours. Yeah. Clean and clean the carpets. Yeah. Because you pick good tenants and the properties are already in really good shape. That's interesting. So once again, it's it's how it's how you set it up in the beginning. 
Yeah, and, and you know, and I see that. I, I see what you're saying because if, if you've replaced the toilets, you've replaced the, the plumbing and things that were in bad shape, you're not going to get calls on those things because they're already replaced. Correct. Um, which Windows makes are sense. replaced. Yep. HVAC is correct. Roofs are good because I actually renovate them as if I would sell them. Yeah. So and then also they're, they're ready. Set. They're also ready if well, you need to sell them. Unless I keep it for 20 years. Right, right. And then it's, it's, it's paid worth off. a lot more. Absolutely. It's paid off. And then I would expect that when and when I want to sell, that I would go in and tweak it. It would almost be like another simple little flip yeah, because sure. it's my work. It's, you know what right, I mean? Right, right. Um, that I'm upgrading. And you're and you're not afraid to put quality things in. Like you're, you're, you're putting granite in. You're putting... You know, nice color. You spend the time. I've seen you. I've seen your flips, and and they and they they aren't. There's bad flips and there's good flips in this area. You've seen the there bad are. ones, and there and are. you do a good flip. Um, Thank you. You know the bad flips. You can tell that the people really should not be in that business because the stuff is like not measured right and it's just a mess. So it's good to see, and I think that's important because really, if you if you do a bad flip, and and things go wrong, it's going to be even worse because now you can't sell it. You know, I always look at things, something you got to be able to sell it if you need, if you need to, for some reason, you know, but, but you're holding a lot of properties, which is awesome. So one of the other things I want to get into is, um, I had heard before a couple of times that the people say that when you buy the property is really the most important part is buying it right. Buying it at the right price is the most important part. Cause if you buy it for too much and then you put too much into it, you kind of get in a situation with a flip that is not good. Okay, so that's correct. The most important thing you can do is understand what the property will be worth when it's done and how much will it take to get it ready for sale. It's very important to choose finishes that are appropriate for the price range Mm -hmm. that the property will be in when you sell so you do not over-improve. And I think that that's the biggest mistake that people make is they over improve, they mm-hmm. choose, they don't pay attention to their budget and learn how to shop. But you have to know what the property is going to be worth and you have to be conservative on the way out. It's really easy to add an extra $5,000 to the bottom line because you were conservative yeah. and end up with more profit. So then you back into what the property can be purchased for to maintain a profitability. And enough of a profitability that even if there was a $5,000 mistake, you're still okay. Hmm, right. So it, it all comes down to the number that you buy it. You cannot forget your interest expense, your utility carry, um, your closing costs in, your closing costs Cost out. out. Mm-hmm. You have to refill, you have to have all of that in there so that you really know what you've got. Because yeah, the only person, <laughs> the person that loses if you're fooling yourself is you. You know what I mean? If, if you try to fool yourself in thinking, oh, I can do this kitchen for two grand and we know darn well it's going to be 3,500, you're already losing 1,500 right there. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's, those are the things that I see people do. But um, I, I even learned over time because I would always underestimate labor that oh, yeah. now when I do a budget, I just add somewhere between three and five thousand dollars a line item extra labor, extra just in case, right? Because it it seems to happen. It yeah. just happens. Yeah, right, right. Is there anything else you can think of that that when when somebody thinks about investing or comes into you and says, you know, I think I want to be an investor, I want to do flips, you know, what would your advice be to them, or what would you say to them? Well, I guess I would want to know if they planned on doing the work themselves or not. Mm-hmm. I would want to know how they were anticipating financing it. A lot of people go to private money lenders and the interest rates are astronomical and that gets scary because if the property doesn't sell, it Mm -hmm. can actually eliminate their entire profit. Or I ask them if they have a crew together to do the improvements. It's that kind of question, you know, uh, you know, just trying to protect them. And then, you know, oftentimes even if they, I'm so conservative when I'm working with clients and I tell them what their number should be and that they have to be careful. Like we can't just spend an extra $7,000 mm-hmm. buying it and hope we get more. That's how you get caught. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. You can't always All hope. of a sudden a heating <laughs> system that needs to be replaced and you know, you spent the extra 5,000 buying it and the market's a little tight when you're done and you're it's all gone. Yeah, exactly. And it doesn't I take never long. want to do that to anybody. So no, not good. I not good. The conserv- be, so I guess I would say to be conservative mm-hmm. 
so that when you do buy, you know you've bought it at a good number yeah. that you've you've protected yourself from having bad things happen later. Yes. Yeah, so what's your um, just real quick? And this is the last thing I want to ask you because we have to get this thing wrapped up. What um what is your turnaround time like when you, from the time you settle to the time it's ready to to flip? What is that? What do you think that window of time is? It depends on the project. Okay. I've got a really big project. That's that could be three months. It depends on weather. Right. What okay. do I got? Okay. If I've got exterior stuff to do, but um, usually I am in and out and closed in seven months. Okay. Purchased under contract. Done. And I'm slow. I I'm gonna be honest. I'm probably slow on the renovation side. Okay. Um, and it could be faster because of the quality. No, just because sometimes I I don't get 40 hours gotcha. of, of a work week out of people. Yeah, I forgot you're also, you also sell real estate a little bit yeah. too. <laughs> Michelle is a high performance uh, real estate agent. I mean, she's uh, been at the top of her game for a really long time. And I, I just wanted to say thank you. You're also a good friend. I want to say thanks for coming on here. We're going to have you back on again. Um, I think in a couple of weeks or something like that, we'll have you back on. You're going to talk about the class that you have. Maybe just give us a real quick thing. What is the class called that you are, you, you've created? Um, the class I created is called beyond the script and, uh, it's just, um, an accumulation of some of my practices over the years, mm-hmm. things that I really believe in when it comes to customer service and being a great realtor and a great human being. Awesome. So we're definitely going to have you back on for that because I want to talk and really dig into that. And that's going to be for realtors and and for anybody and anybody's sales life or anything in, 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 actually in, thinking in life at all, I think it, it pertains to it. So I want to thank you for coming on here today. Michelle McCartney was awesome. She's from Keller Williams Platinum Realty. And uh, hopefully you'll listen to this podcast and get all kinds of ideas. All right. We'll see you soon. Are your kitchen and bathroom remodels a little overdue? Well, now's your chance to call First Response Contracting. John Sellers will take care of you. 484-256-7136. They do residential and commercial, and they're licensed and insured. Give them a call at 484-256-7136.